Once upon a time, there was a kid named Andy who loved sailing. Andy read and reread a book about a guy who sailed all the way around the world. He thought, how amazing would that be? Andy grew up to have a great life with some amazing children he wanted to be an example for, and he built a fulfilling career serving others, coaching Olympians and some of the greatest athletes in the world, coaching college students and young entrepreneurs and business people and teachers and fellow coaches. Over the more than three decades of Coach Andrew's career, he's had an incredibly positive impact on thousands of lives, all while helping people achieve their dreams. Now, Andrew is embarking on a dream of his own, sailing around the world in the Clipper Round the World race. 42,000 miles, 11 months sailing the globe, sailing into port on six of the world's seven continents. It's the adventure of a lifetime, young Andy's dream manifested by Andrew's ongoing belief and positive mindset. Where in the world is Andrew Moss? Let's find out. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Kay. So nice to see you. It's great to see you too. Um, Where are you in the world right now? Hmm. I am in a uh, community center in the town of Oban, which is on the northwestern coast of Scotland, uh, about... 56 and a half degrees north, which for reference is further north than any town or community in Canada. Um, it's up sort of level with Hudson's Bay. Um, so other than some of our Inuit um, indigenous and a lot of polar bears, uh, yeah, this is pretty far north. Uh, definitely further north than I've ever been. Wow. It how amazing. I, I mean, like that really puts it in perspective because people often joke about how far north Canada is. And mm-hmm. and it is Canada does extend very far north, but to be that far above where there's habitation in Canada, like wowzers. Yeah, when you it was interesting because um the when we went around Tasmania on the on the southern uh, part of the race, uh the furthest south we got was um 45 degrees south, 45 and a half degrees south. Um, so to be a full 10 degrees is uh, 600 miles further north than we were south. And if you had told me to go 600 miles south of Tasmania, I would have said, yeah, we're going to run into Antarctica. And I think we would have actually run into Antarctica. So, um, yeah, it's quite fascinating. And uh, it's also very interesting the way the Gulf Stream current moderates the weather such that a lot of people live up here. A lot of people live even north of here in, in Norway and Sweden and Finland, wow. yeah. um, which is only possible because that current, which might be a topic of our conversation today, uh, that current um, sends a, a significant amount of moderate weather way further north than it deserves to be otherwise. So oh, wow. um, it's, uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, okay. A couple things. One, you have this really, you are in this really cool community center where there is a little painting behind you that says, uh, yeah. Want to tell us what it says? It says mindset is everything. I, I couldn't read it at first because the camera flips it around backwards, but yeah, I just, <laughs> I just randomly sat down here and then I looked over my shoulder and the, the words mindset is everything was beautifully p- painted. And there's Funny enough, there are uh, paintings of trees in front of me. There's a painting of somebody (laughs) with a surfboard standing on the beach. And I'm like, somebody is messing with me right now because (laughs) they've put me in the perfect room. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, That's amazing. Um, Yeah. And it feels like the way that you're holding your camera is making it so that like the, the words are like both you and those words are kind of centered, which is neat. Like, those words are, uh, have been a very important part of this past year. Yeah. Yeah. They sure have. Um, I want to ask about what the sun is doing right now, where you are, and then let's go into the race. Okay. <laughs> well, the sun is hiding behind some very gray and dreary clouds and a bunch of rain. Um, from what I hear, a more typical um, Scottish summer day. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And uh, but we had four days of, of beautiful weather when we arrived, and uh, the locals were all very thankful for us bringing the nice weather across the Atlantic with us. And uh, seems to have run its course now. And uh, yeah, it's it's cool, it's gray, it's raining. Um, mm -hmm. So we may have seen the sun for the last time for a few days, but mm -hmm. uh, it's up there somewhere. And it's up there. This was what I was actually thinking about too. Like it's up there for a lot of the time right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was certainly, you know, a theme of, of the leg was, um, you know, as we sailed uh, uh, further North, um, the days got longer and longer. So the, the daylight hours got longer and longer. The days stayed the same, 24 mm. hours. But, uh, <laughs> the the uh, daylight hours uh, got longer and longer to the point where in the last probably three or four days, there would be sort of an orange glow on the horizon at uh, sundown that would just stay there until about, well, and sundown was about 10 p.m. So from 10 till about 2.30, there would just be this orange glow and then the sun would come back up again. Wow. So it never, never got dark. We, we, we had visibility to, from the sails and do everything all, all through the, all the time. Night, nighttime. Yeah. So it was, uh, I mean, you hear about that in Norway and, you know, Sweden and Northern parts of those countries that the sun basically just dips and then comes back up. And we, we, we basically had that. Wow. That is it. Well, what was the experience of that? Well, it was, it was beautiful. I mean, the reality of sailing, you know, at, you know, even the sunsets and the sunrises as we've done around the planet um, are always something that, you know, catch your breath. Um, but to be able to sail through the night, I mean, it's kind of two sides of it because some of the most spectacular nighttime sailings have been, in the darkest of darks when there's no moon clear mm -hmm. sky and all you have are, are planets and stars lighting the way um, those are probably the highlight nights to be honest of the last 10 11 months um, especially the nights yeah when this when the moon is is not up um, to see what you know jupiter and venus like the amount of light that they generate wow. um, was enough to to be able to 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 see the horizon and see the waves around us and uh, so that was very cool and then you know this this equally I think the sun the sun setting later and later was also sort of a um, a bit of a, a you know forewarning of of the fact that this you know we're coming to the end because you know the end of the summer um, is the end of the race in a mm. lot of ways and so. Um, you know, these long days, we've been talking about looking forward to these long days for quite a few months now, because the days were very short for, for a while there, um, where the daylight hours were very short. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, there was some, I don't know, it was a really nice way to come into Scotland to have, first of all, we had beautiful weather, we we're able to see the coast and have great sunsets all the way through and sunrises all the way through to, to our arrival. Uh, but it's also the sign of the end of something uh, in terms of the race. And mm. so sort of mixed emotions around that. Mm. You you said something, you shared in the Facebook group something that, I don't, well, I guess I was a little bit surprised. I, mo well, it's just something that I hadn't heard from you before, which was this was a tough leg or a tough race <laughs> for our PSP crew. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we um, some of this has been repetitive through the whole race, which is, you know, we often find ourselves at times in the race uh, in a very good position with some of the, the top performing boats all around us, and we find ourselves competing equally or or better than those boats, and and that gives us great excitement and hope and focus. Um, and then we'll make a decision or two um, that for some reason sends us in a different direction than those other boats. And um, the next time we look up, you know, they're 150 miles ahead of us. <laughs> and uh, mm. and that, that this was the first race where 
you could feel the whole boat sort of the shoulders dropped a little bit uh, on the whole mm-hmm. boat. It, you know, on previous races, there's been one or two people who who really struggled with that, and uh, some of our more sort of outgoing, competitive people. But the whole boat really seemed to 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 uh, to lose something. Yeah, when we uh, dropped well back, and then you know, even to the point where we were in tenth place, and the boat eleventh was 120 miles behind us at one point, and then the next two days later, they were five miles behind us. Mm. <laughs> it was just like like. And so we ended up sailing the last couple of days, uh, racing not to come last, which certainly not what I signed up for, but um, that was the reality. And then, uh, you know, the way the race ended for us was, uh, again, pretty disappointing for me. It, it was um, the, the the last place boat, for some reason, still uh, confuses me, but for some reason they decided that they wanted to stop racing um, a couple hundred miles before the finish line um, mm-hmm. and just motor uh, or head straight to the finish and straight to Oban, basically. Uh, there was a forecast that the wind was going to completely die and we would be floating out there for days on end. Um, but they made that decision when there was still a very nice breeze and we were going along quite nicely. And they were only three miles behind us at that point. Uh, so we were ha- having quite a quite a competitive race uh, for to not come last. And uh, so as soon as they declared that, um, a bunch of people on our boat started to question why we would continue to sail because at that point we were about, I don't know, 80 or 90 miles behind the ninth place boat. Um, so, you know, Mike uh, made the decision to bring that conversation to the whole crew and, uh, to vote on what people wanted to do. Uh, the options being uh, to continue to sail all the way to the finish line or until we were told that we had to stop by the race uh, race committee uh, because maybe we, you know the amount of time, time left was uh, not sufficient for the turnaround and open. Uh, so that was option one. Option two was to stop racing right away. And option three was to keep racing for a little while to see if we could make any headway on the boats ahead of us and then sort of re-vote mm. <laughs> from there. So um, on the first vote, there was only uh, uh, five people. There were five people in favor of continuing to sail to the finish line. And there was 14 for the other two options. Um we ended up sort of talking that through and we ended up having a, another vote, which ended up with two people in favor of stopping um, or sorry, two people in favor of continuing to the finish line. Uh, and the rest of them were in favor of uh, continuing for an hour and a half, which was the next time we would get a, uh, an update on the boat positions. And so uh, 17 against uh, myself and one of my other uh, partners who, uh, funny enough, the two people who have worked the most on the boat from a month before we left to start the race until now, which was myself and, and Mark, uh, we were the two who voted to keep sailing to the finish line. Mm-hmm. Everybody else voted to, uh, once the update came in, we had lost a few more miles to the ninth place boat and they clearly had some wind and we're going to make it to the finish line. It looked like, um, and, uh, so the boat was, uh, yeah, 17 to two to, uh, stop racing. So we did that. And, um, I think within about four hours or so of the, of making that decision, um, a really nice breeze that had been forecast, um, uh, came in and we uh, sailed the whole way to Oban, (laughs) Um, even though officially we were not racing anymore, which was sort of absurd, but um, it's just the way, you know, mother nature was playing with us, messing with us. But um, yeah, you know, so the words behind me, mindset is everything. I, 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 um, I think I struggled with the mindset of quitting just because, we couldn't, you know, improve our position. Like 
Mm. We er we earned 10th place. Um, and uh, to me, it was our, it should have been our obligation to finish the race um, accordingly, but we didn't. And we got in uh, several days early. So everybody was happy with that. And, uh, you know, things have moved on. And uh, so it was, it was a challenging race from that perspective. I think, you know, the way the race unfolded, our position was one thing, but the mindset around uh, our performance and the frustration with, you know, being where we were in the race, I think um, was most noticeable on this race compared to all the other ones so far. Wow. I mean, thank you for sharing. I can feel and hear the, just how tough this was for you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I, if I was, uh, yeah, it's easy to say what I would have done if I was in, in, in the skipper position, but you know, I'm not, so it's not my place, but it's, um, you know, I think we all signed up for a sailing race and anybody who knows about sailing knows that it's, you know, part of the challenge is that, you know, the wind isn't always going in your favor, but there's a race and there's a course and there's, you know, you, you, you are, uh, there's an expectation, at least in my mind that you finish, finish what you've started and, um, uh, um, uh, or, you know, be forced to stop because the racing rules, uh, dictate that. And, uh, I would have much preferred being pulled off the race course by the race committee because, you know, we'd run out of time than, than to, to voluntarily do it, but yeah. it's not, not the way things happen. And it's interesting. Um, I'm going to, I need to hear myself while I just make sure. Okay, good. There is a line. I, I wanted to make sure that I was recording myself as well as you. <laughs> it turns out I am. So that's good. Um, the, this seems like the first race where mm, something crept in and it is mindset, isn't it? Like where something crept in that was, was a little bit of like, I don't know, I, I won't, I don't want to name an emotion, but some emotions came in that were like, what if it goes this way? What if it goes that way? Like, what, do, what, if, what do we do if this happens? And, and it, it seems like it was lost sight of a little bit. The idea that like, we, we, we could actually just keep going until we're told not to like just because they did that doesn't mean we have to do that or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there's something different ha definitely had crept in and it wasn't just in the last couple of days. I think it was most of the race. It was noticeable that I think that the fact that we're near the end meant that there's a, um, it didn't, it didn't mean that this was true, but people seem to, have adopted a, a mindset that um, they were less tolerant about pushing through a hard moment. Um, mm. And whereas, you know, in previous races, you know, we've had tough moments and we've, been, you know, been in a position that we didn't, didn't want to be in and we, and we were willing to fight back. And I mean, you know, the trip to Seattle was a great example where we were, right? we were 400 miles behind the main group. And then we ended up finishing within 25 minutes of the, the leaders, right? Or 45 yeah. minutes of the leaders. And, and, you know, being at the back of the pack gives you an advantage in some ways of you, you have the ability to get different weather than the boats ahead of you will get. And maybe you get it sooner and can gain. But it, it wasn't even like something had shifted. And I do think that the nearing the end of the race has changed the commitment level to to push through tough tough moments and i do expect that the last race will be different because it's only going to be five days mm -hmm. um, um but for the words behind me you know mindset is everything um uh, it's a hard thing to shift once the mindset goes in one direction is to, to get everybody to, to move it in a new one. So we'll see how it goes because if, if we have a setback or things aren't going our way in the first day or two, I'm very curious to see how well, uh, how committed people stay uh, yeah. to pushing right to the very fast last minute uh, yeah. to get across the finish line. And uh, so that, yeah, there's a sense I can feel the disappointment, in, <laughs> even as I'm describing it. Um, it's disappointing that that that's where we're at, but it's also sort of an accumulation of 
you know, really trying, a lot of us really trying our best to, to help turn this around uh, for, for the whole boat. And, um, you know, just, you know, there's some things that are continue to not happen on the boat in terms of staying competitive and, and making decisions that keep us in the race and um, staying with boats that are clearly amongst the top boats in every race and, and, and just racing them and, you know, not needing to do anything crazy to, to do all them. We just need to stay with them and, and outrace them because we've shown that we can, mm. uh, but somehow we end up not doing that. And, and then we, uh, yeah, we find ourselves way, way behind. So it's just where we're at. And, uh, you know, we got a five day race left. And, uh, so we're hoping everybody's going to, you know, we had a conversation yesterday as a, as a crew and we're hoping, you know, from the sounds of it, everybody's willing to put a good push in for the last, last week and, uh, do everything they can to, to help us perform the way we, we believe we're capable of. So I hopeful that that's the way it unfolds. Yeah. Yeah. I am too. <laughs> I feel that I am too. Um, as you're talking, I'm thinking of some of, some of the most, <clears throat> I guess, probably iconic, at least in, in the Northeast, Northeastern United States, like Patriots games where they were down by, you know, 14 and somebody did a something that caused everybody to mm -hmm. go, oh, maybe we can, maybe there is a way. Right. And, and other, well, this is a bit more global, but like, like tennis, tennis matches, because tennis is such a mindset. It's such a mind mm. game at heart where, where somebody ended up not being able to turn it around because they just, it just got into their head about, mm -hmm. about the, the, the possibilities versus the like, you know, I suppose what someone might think of as the realities. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know though. Yeah. And, and I, I think all along as we've gone, as you've gone around the world and as we've been talking, it's been really interesting to see how like you've been balancing a, a real competitive, you know, not to beat the pants off everybody else, but to really make the decisions that put you in the position that, 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 make it a successful from that standpoint, like, and, and then the conditions that you can't, we had a conversation one time and you were like, you just can't, like, how do you measure performance in a, <laughs> in a world of wind holes for some and not others and like changing weather and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, but the, and the, the ease with which you have begun to feel about, like, it's a clipper fleet. Like we don't necessarily have to feel like we're in, you know, uh, doggy dog competition with each other but it feels like this feels like something deeper for you that it isn't about doggy dog or or even necessarily winning it's about doing the best that you can and giving your absolute all until the race is ended or until you're told okay now you must stop mm. yeah yeah i mean that's there's a fundamental expectation that i have that, of that that that's what I signed up to do. Um, you know, it would have been the same thing if, if somebody had tried to convince me to, you know, I needed to get off the boat for some reason, I would have had a real struggle with that because that's not what I've signed up to do. Um, but you know, on the racing side, you're right. There's certainly a moderation of the competitive focus from the start of the race till now, just based on the reality of, you know, that you don't have a crew that are all, equally as competitive or interested in, in that aspect. Um, but nobody would argue the fact that people enjoy being on the boat a lot more when we're doing well than when we're not doing well. Mm -hmm. And people enjoy the experience of sailing and being part of our crew more when we're doing well and we're being competitive than, than when we're not. And I think the frustration is only coming because we're making the same kinds of mistakes that we've been making almost the whole way around. And, you know, uh, I'd hoped, and many of us on the boat had hoped that those decisions would improve over time, but they, they, they haven't. And so now we're a ninth place boat overall, and we're sailing exactly as you would expect a ninth place boat to sail, which is, you know, we do some things well, and then we make some, some bad decisions and we, uh, you know, the other boats are as confused as, as we are as to why we're 
not being more competitive because anytime we're around them, we're as fast as they are. and We actually do our, our maneuvers even better than most of the top boats do. And they've all noticed that. And yet, mm -hmm. you know, when they finish, you know, we're still two, three, 400 miles behind before we come in. And um, so that's, yeah, there's a frustration of, it feels like we have the, the capacity to do better with the people we have on the boat and the way we sail the boat. But, you know, we need everybody on board to be making good decisions in, in key moments. And, and that's just not happening. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the end is coming. So there's also a sense of, you know, it, the reality is we're going to walk away as a ninth place boat and, um, <laughs> not not all of us are happy about that. So, mm, mm. Um, but so be it. It it doesn't take away from the achievement and the adventure and the 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 how amazing an experience it has been. It takes nothing away from that. It's just sort of one piece of the puzzle that'll be left. Um, not quite the way we would have liked to see it. Mm. Like it's how it's played out. It's kind of yeah. Yeah, I mean, if if we had adapted and adjusted and improved over time, and you know, still worked our way into the you know top five, top six, uh, more often, and been around the, the front of the pack, um, everybody would have been happy. Everybody would have said, you know, everybody learned something, improved, changed as needed. Um, and we got better as a result. Um, and there's a lot of us on the boat that have made those efforts, but, but overall, you know, the, the sailing comes down to the one side is the execution. The other side is the tactics and the decision-making. And, and so both need to improve in, in order for the overall performance to improve. And we just haven't, you know, the, the decision-making and the tactics hasn't improved as much as the rest has improved. Mm. And, um, so it's, it's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm not saying anything here that I haven't said in front of our whole crew and, and skipper and, and, and assistant. So um, it's not always a popular thing to, to hear, but it's the reality that of why we are where we are is that, you know, we know and everybody acknowledges that we do the sailing part as well as anybody. It's just the racing part and the decision making part that always seems to be a couple of moments that set us off. And and some of it you can account to bad luck and mother nature, but on the whole, over eleven months, um, it should it should balance out. And if we keep ourselves in a position relative to where the other boats are, then we're either all going to get bad luck or we're all going to get good luck. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so. You know, there'll be less less differential. Um, this past race, we tried with a couple of uh, of the other boats to do a a bit of a long shot route to head way north and and try to avoid um, a wind hole. But it turned out that the wind hole was exactly where we headed instead of where it had been forecast. And then the other boats that stayed south where we had originally been benefited and and sailed you know, right on into Ho Oban with no problem. So it was, you know, some people that when we got to shore said that they were, they thought the route we were taking looked promising for a few days and then it kind of petered out. Um, mm. But, you know, it's just the way things unfolded. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a, a this was a weird race. Um, Energetically on the boat, you mean? energetically and then the way it finished um yeah I, I get the sense that everybody's ready to get back on the boat and, and push hard for the last race so I, I, cool. i'm hopeful of of that and uh, i'm excited to get back on the boat and go on sunday but um yeah in terms of the last two weeks it was it was a struggle for sure yeah yeah um i well i want to really honor that i mean i think this is like this feels like not the happiest conversation that we've had or could be having. 